All right, so uh, my Anycubic Chiron giant printer with a giant problem. Um, the massive heat bed has gone out. So um, I contacted Anycubic support. They sent me a new one. It did take quite a while to get here. I think it took three weeks or so, but uh, of course it's coming from overseas and we know that everything is um, kind of delayed. Anyhow, so just a quick little video on how I'm going to tear it apart, get the hotbed changed out, and get it back in service. So let's get right into it. So to, so to start off, I, uh, I have this thing laying on its back, and pretty much most of what you need to do is going to be back here. Um, you're going to have to flip back and forth a few times, but nothing too, too major. Hopefully, let's see if I can get this keep with that camera angle so um, first things first on our little enclosure here that encloses all the electronics um, there's four screws that we're gonna have to pop out all the wiring for the hotbed does come into here so you know prior to doing any of this of course you want to make sure that's unplugged um, keep it unplugged for a little while or try to turn it on while it's unplugged to discharge any uh, power stored in the power supply so let's get right into it That's as simple as that. So, set that cover aside. Now looking in here, um, this right here is your cable coming from your hotbed. So to disconnect this, first you wanna trace right up here. This is the thermistor input from the hotbed that tells the printer what temperature it's set at. And then right here, this is actually the uh, power MOSFET that's feeding power to the bed. So you can see it's going in from the power supply through our MOSFETs and back out to the bed. So we'll just undo those two screws and pull this cable out. Don't worry too much about keeping track of uh, positive negative. It's actually marked right there on our board. So once we get that pulled out, just pull this out right here and try to ever so gently feed it out the back. And of course there is actually a clamp on the other side here. So let's turn this back over. And somebody's gonna yell at me for handling my printer the way I do, but that's all right. So we can see that that cable is clamped down right there in one spot. So we'll pull this out, I'll yank that out, set that and the clamp aside. And the cables are free to pull out from there. Control removal of the hotbed and it actually can be done, let's see if I can get low enough for this, by just removing the knobs from down here. So once you get those knobs removed, there's a zip tie back there that you'll cut for the cable and the hotbed should be free to pull out. I should have mentioned this before, but make sure you've given yourself at least a little bit of room on your carriage. Uh, I probably should have given it a little bit more, but before you start any of this, you'd want that raised up and out of the way. So what I actually did was uh, went ahead, unscrewed the four knobs. The hotbed itself just lifts straight up. And it looks like, depending on how the new one looks, we may not even have to mess with any of these zip ties or anything. Um, I did want to take a look, close look at the connections. But it does look like those are just fine. So it is indeed an issue with the hotbed um, thermistor. So we're going to go ahead and open up the new one and swap the new one back in and we'll see how that goes 
So here's the new hotbed in Old's Glory. Um, I believe this was actually taped onto the original one, if I'm not mistaken, when you receive the printer. Here's the hardware you're gonna need. And of course the hotbed itself is in here, secured with a little bit of foam. So let's uh, pull this off. So one interesting thing on this, which I wasn't really expecting, is that the hotbed itself and the glass are separated. Um, originally on my printer, I try to lift up the glass from the hotbed to see if I can maybe use another piece of glass and I couldn't because it was glued together. So in this piece, it's actually, um, they're not glued together because obviously you have some screws to get in there, which makes perfect sense. Um, that being said though, I probably will go ahead and just glue down the new AnyCubic glass for a few different reasons. Um, one, because it is still under warranty, so I'd rather use what they recommend using, and two, because I don't have anything else handy. So, you know, my impatience is going to get the best of me, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, use the hardware they provide. So, let's see. Um, I know that AnyCubic does have a video. So how to attach, how to attach all of that hardware. But what we can do, let's go right over here. Let's just go ahead and look at our old piece and we can see how it all goes together. So that screw is gonna go in there. Hopefully you can see all this. Then you've got your, um, your, Teflon washer, flat washer, then the nut. So all that will screw together. Um, we'll get all that stuff in, and then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna transfer over the little tie right here, or the little bracket right here, just so that we can secure our wiring on the new one because that is not provided on the new one, simply because the, I don't know why actually, I'm just thinking. They could have actually taken care of, oh, you know why? Because it's not actually secured with anything. So you do need the, the new glass bed to be on this before you can secure all that hardware. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and assemble the hardware first and um, I'll show you what that looks like. I'll go ahead and attach the glass as well just so that I can get straight to the wire man management portion of it. So. I'll be right back. All right, guys, got the glass uh, on there. Got everything um, not quite tight, but I do have it snug on there, and I'm going to tighten these up in just a minute here. But what I wanted to talk about for a quick second was just the wire management routine that they got. So we're going to do literally the same thing they did, which is um, one of these little glass keepers. It's going to go in the corner right there. And we're actually just gonna reuse, and I've already loosened this, we're gonna reuse this little guy. Just cause uh, I don't have any more laying around. So, come back here, just pop it on. Very quick and simple. And what we're gonna do is just uh, zip tie that right there. And actually we're gonna do that after the hotbed is on the printer and we have it mostly leveled only because we do want to get that around the spring before we uh we install the hotbed so or i mean after we install the hotbed because if we get there if we get that uh on the bolt we're not going to be able to install our spring so that'll just hold that in place until we're ready to go once we get that spring in we'll just go in from underneath and pop a zip tie on and of course, we're gonna pop in the rest of the little keepers in the corners. The glue that they do provide on the glass is actually extremely sticky, so be careful lining it up. Um, 
I might have not been 100% centered when I got mine on, but it's good enough for me. So we'll just go ahead and screw the rest of these on and then uh, tighten up. Let's not forget to tighten up our four nuts right there and we'll install it back on the printer. Right. So back over the printer, we're just gonna wanna set these uh, obviously with their springs into the respective holes on the carriage, which are these over here. Uh, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to try to do it one at a time. So slide the spring on and just drop it through and just go all the way around doing that. Um, obviously, this is going to be this is going to need to be re-leveled after the fact. Um, that's pretty much a given. But uh, I'm going to cut this video because I know that this is going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt to do while filming so I'll get this all together and then uh, resume the video from there actually you know what maybe it's not so bad so for these front ones like for right now I got the back ones in you can always just slide the bed over to the front and now you have a little bit more room to work on your front bolts so that I'll drop in there and actually I think I am pretty well lined up except for this one back corner that one just wants to fight me just a little bit we know it's not gonna win but you could try so then you'll just take your little adjusting screws pop those on and you, know, you can just snug them up just for now. Obviously, we're going to have to go through a whole leveling procedure um, after this is all done. Again, probably slide on the front ones first. And then move the bed back and do the two rears. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to tighten these up as much as I can for now. And once I get the printer on, make sure everything does work the way it should. Then I'll start a whole leveling procedure and of course it's going to take quite a while because we're going to be so off level that we're not even going to be near where we need to be. So let's get these things tightened up and then we'll go ahead and get back to wire management. So now what we'll want to do is turn the printer back over so we can finish up our wire connections to the um, to the main board and get this thing all leveled up and figured out. So once again, our wiring's back here. Seems like it's almost a little shorter this time around, but of course it's not, just the way that's ran. Uh, let's go pop this in through here. And just like before, we're gonna have the one two pin connector. It's gonna pop in right over there. Make sure that's seated well. If you have some glue, you can throw a drop of glue on that as well, but I do not. And then from here, we'll just reconnect the um, power wires down to the MOSFET. Lost the screw. So when you're screwing these in, what I always suggest is make sure it's nice and tight. And even after you do make sure it's nice and tight, give it a little tug, make sure it's not gonna go anywhere, just to make sure it's fully inserted. And that's about it. We'll get the cover back on and we'll fire it up and see what we get.
Now that that's all done, we'll flip this thing back over. And just do not forget that there is a film on this base that you will want to peel off. And probably should have done that earlier, but I think I'll be all right. If I really want to, I can always just pull off these, uh, these little keeper tabs right here on the corners and uh, remove the little bits that are under there, but I don't think that they're going to be that big of an issue. Just a little bit of it left under there. So, let's see. Um... I think I'm all right on my wire management back here. Seems like it goes back and forth. Full travel. Doesn't look like I'm gonna be stretching it or anything. So I'll go ahead and plug it back in. So, um, like I said, I do have to re-level this. I actually need to find my original SD card that has the manual level and uh, automatic leveling G-codes on there. But just to test and make sure that it does work, we're going to go, first of all, there's a bed temp there, so that's a good sign. And go ahead and try to preheat and see what happens. Looks like it's functioning normally. So one thing to keep in mind on these, I know there's an automatic leveling feature with a probe. Um, don't count on that. What I did with mine is I manually leveled first and then ran through the automatic um, leveling after that just to find the low spots in the bed and get it all figure it out but uh, don't think that you're going to just plug in and um, use solely automatic leveling and that that that's all it's going to be you definitely want to use the manual leveling method first and then the automatic leveling method just to fine tune all that uh, but this looks like it's definitely working bed does feel like it's warming up before I do level it, I will let it get to that uh, preset temp and let it sit there for about five minutes so that that entire bed levels evenly or warms evenly and it's as level as can be. And I'll go ahead and print from there. I hope this video helped you out. Enjoy.